and you see all of the ups and downs, all of the, the, the failures and all of the shortcomings, and did you realize God was good through it all? Yes, oh, come on now. If you had some setbacks, God was still good. Yes, oh, come on, church. Every setback was setting you up for your comeback. Every bad relationship, God was bringing you to a better one. Oh, come on, church. Y'all better hear me in this house today. Oh, come on now. See, we get too concerned about what's going on back. Think about the good God has done. Amen? Is that all right with anybody in here? We got to stop complaining and thinking about the back. I won't complain. Amen? Amen. Somebody say, I won't complain. I won't complain. I, will, I refuse to complain to a good God. Amen? Amen. To a God that's been better to me than I've been to myself. Right. A God that has made a way time and time again. So we need to give God praise. Amen? Amen. Just give God a worship praise right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like that song says, God has been good to me. Amen. I will seek you. I will find you. Let me tell you something. If you seek God, you're going to find him. That's right. And, and that's just a plain and simple thing. If you seek the Lord, you're going to find him. Amen. Amen. There's no big giant equation. He said, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. That's a, that's a simple thing. Amen. And I thank God that we as a church are drawing nearer to God. Amen. Amen. So today I want to just share. If you would turn with me to Job chapter 1. I want to just share a word, amen. I'm not going to hold you that long. I just want to share what the Lord has put on my heart, amen. If you missed uh, my last two messages, amen, glory to God, the open door policy, I encourage you to get that, amen, because I believe all these messages tie in together, amen. I believe that the Holy Spirit always does things in order, amen. amen. How many people believe that, amen? And, and today I want to talk to you about the power of a mind that's made up. Oh, come on, church. I, I want to talk to you about the power of a mind that is made up. And I believe when the believers make up their minds, amen, to do the things that God has called them to do, there are going to be some miraculous things happening, amen? amen. When believers make up in their mind that they are not going any other way but God's way, that's when things are going to happen, amen? amen. And when we look here in Job, Chapter 1, amen. We, we, we notice some things, amen. We notice that Job was very phenomenally materially blessed. Mm -hmm. It was mind-boggling. The scripture says he was one of the wealthiest men, men in the East. That means no one in all of the East had any more wealth than this man. He was blessed with material things. But not only was he blessed with material things, he was blessed with great spiritual blessings. I, I, I don't want you to get too caught up in the physical, amen, because sometimes we get too caught up in the physical, we miss out on the spiritual. Right. See, I want you to understand, Job was more than his physical possessions. True greatness is not predicated upon what we possess. Jesus said this in Luke chapter 12, and I, I, I pray that Christians get a hold of this. He said, a man's life does not consist and the abundance of the things he possesses. Right. See, a lot of people have possessions, but really those possessions possess them. Right. Oh, come on, church. That's why Jesus had to let them know that he saw people were getting caught up in what they had. He said, your life is more than that. Amen? Amen. So if I turn to your neighbor and say, it's more than that. It's more Amen. than that. True greatness is determined by the things you possess in your heart. By the things you possess in your spirit. By the things you possess in your soul. Job did not wake up one day and find himself overwhelmed with material and spiritual blessings. Job, according to the scripture, at a young age, looked at life and made some critical decisions. He recognized there are two pathways to take in life. He recognized that even before Christ ever lived and ever taught the message, that he taught that there are two paths you can take in life. And Jesus spoke about these two paths in Matthew chapter 7 verse 13. He said, enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to where? Destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Oh glory. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. 
So what God and what Jesus was saying here is there is a broad way or a broad path and many will take that path and that path leads to destruction. And we see that so much today that where the crowd is going, people want to follow the crowd. Where the masses are going, if everybody's doing it, well, I just got to follow suit. Well, I just got to do what everybody else do. No, you don't have to. I, 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 I try to tell my children so much, you know, I, and I preach before that, you know, sometimes you got to be the one. You got to be that one that stands out. If you all by yourself, listen, Jesus is with you. Oh, come on, church. If you're the only one standing when everybody else is bowing, Jesus is right there with you. Oh, come on, church. I, I, I try to tell my children that be, don't be afraid to stand out. Don't be afraid. If they call you weird, that's all right. If they call you a Jesus freak, that's all right. Hey, I'd rather be a freak for Jesus than uh, going to hell and be popular. Oh, come on, church. See, we got to, we got to, you know, Jesus it was telling us here that the broad road is the road that everybody's going on. But that road leads to destruction. The broad path is filled with the masses and the majority of people and they're on their way to destruction. And we see that so much nowadays where people are following suit. And the scriptures say it's the narrow way that will get you to heaven. Oh, somebody better hear me today. I, I, I want to make it plain for you. We, and, and sometimes we have this thought that we think everybody's going to heaven. But I'm here to tell you today, not everybody's going to heaven. Jesus said himself, some people are going to say, Lord, Lord, I know you, but Jesus is going to say, I don't know you. Oh, come on, church. We, we, we got to realize that it's the narrow road that gets us to where God wants us to be. And, 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 and Jesus taught that most people will not go to heaven. If you want to be normal and fit in the crowd, you're going to hell. I'm just going to keep it plain with you say. See, we, we, too many times as preachers, we candy coat things. We got to keep it real. Amen. The reality is the broad road leads to destruction. And, 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 and if we want to fit in and not stand out, we are headed for destruction. But Jesus taught that the narrow road, the narrow path, is what, we, what will lead us to eternal life according to Jesus. So if you want to be like everybody else, you're on the broad path. And Job looked at this and comprehended this at a young age. He understood that there are two paths and that he needed to go down the right path. David understood this when he talked about this in Psalm chapter 119. He says, how can a young man cleanse his way? Or in one translation, how can a young man stay pure? Or how can a young man stay on the narrow road? By taking heed according to the word of God. See, if you want to know how to do it, you got to get into the word. That's the only way that you're going to know that you're on the right path. Amen. If you don't get into the word, you'll be rolling with everybody else down the broad path on your way to destruction. Job grasped this and he understood the repercussions of good and bad decisions. That's one thing us as believers, we need to realize the, 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 the uh, importance of making good decisions. I was thinking about this and I thought there are two things that will determine what we become in life. The first thing is our decisions and the second thing is our response to God. See, you are a free moral agent. And God will let you choose. I, and and I, I, people, you know, that under the misconception that God forces us to do things. No, he created us with a free will. He created us to be able to choose right and wrong. <laughs> and we have the choice. God put the choices in front of us. He is not going to force himself on you. <laughs> I don't want you to think that God is going to force himself on you. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman, the word said. He's not going to force his spirit on you. He's not going to force his word on you. He's not going to hold you at night point and say, boy, you better read that word. You're not going to see him do that. He's going to offer it to you, and you've got to make the choice to accept it. Look at Adam and Eve. He gave Adam and Eve a choice. He said, here is life, and here is death. you got the choice. He gives that same choice to us today. Here's life and here's death. Here's the narrow and here's the broad. You make the choice. Like they, they, they say, the choice is yours. 
You can choose to serve God or you can choose to disobey. Adam and Eve had the choice. They chose to listen to the devil rather than listen to God. Nobody can make you do. Nobody can make you do it. Nobody can make you serve God. But I want you to understand this, that, and, and this is a powerful thing that the Holy Spirit spoke to me. While we have the power to make our choices, our choices have the power to make us. Mm. Oh, come on, church. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. Although we have the power to make choices, our choices have the power to make us. Your choices are going to make your life, they're going to make your life better. Choose wisely so that your life will reflect the choices that you make. What, and Job learned this. He understood this at a very young age. Job got a hold of this. And what he understood was Ecclesiastes 12.1, which says, Remember now your Creator in the days of your youth, before the difficult days come, and the years draw near when you say, I have no pleasure in them. And what God, the Holy Spirit spoke to me is that we need to make the decision to serve God and to honor God right now. Do what's right in His eyes while you're young. Remember your Creator. And I encourage young people, serve God now. Don't wait. Today is the day to serve God. Amen. Today is the day to make right decisions, to choose to follow God. Don't wait. Amen. Be that one that says, I will make the choice. And that's what Job decided. He realized this in Ecclesiastes, that he would remember his creator. Make the decision, the decision to serve God right now. Job got it at a young age. He made the decision to serve God, to honor God, to do what's right in the sight of God. Job got it at a young age. I'm going to serve God at this age. I'm going to do the right thing right now. And you know something? I thought about something. You know, when you're 18 and under, time seems to just drag on. Didn't it just seem to just drag on when you was under 18? You know, when I was 11, I was like, man, I can't wait to get to 13. Boy, I'm going to be a teenager. Then when I was 13, I said, man, I, I can't wait to get to 15. Then when I'm 15, I said, I can't wait to get to 16. 16 can't come fast enough. Then when I was 16, I said, Lord, I got to get to 17 because I just want to drive. I'm ready to drive around the world. Oh, come on, church. Y'all know y'all was there. And, 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 and then I said, you know, when I get to 18, then I'm going to be grown. Ain't nobody going to be able to tell me nothing. Come on, y'all know y'all was there. Ain't no, man, I'm going to be grown. Ain't nobody going to tell me nothing. Unless you got one of them parents like mine that when you're 18, they still going to tell you something. Oh, y'all better come on. Real parents still going to tell you something at 18. They going to tell you to sit down and, you know, you might be like, all right, well, I'm going to sit down, but in my mind, I'm standing. You know, I'm going to sit down, but I'm going to play mind tricks on my dad. You know, he tell me to sit down now, but I'm st still standing in my mind, you know. But see, if you got real parents... They're going to they gonna tell you what to do long after you're 18. Do I have any witnesses in this church today? Good parents don't stop parenting. Amen? Amen. And, and, and we, 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 we couldn't wait to get to 18. And then after 18, all of a sudden you're 25. And you're like, wow, how did I get to 25? The next thing you know, you're 30. And you're like, wait a minute, I'm 30 now. And then you, you're looking at 40. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm too cool to be a 40-year-old. I'm too young to be a 40-year-old. And, and you see, it seemed like time. It seemed like as soon as you after you hit 80, you just hit the gas and you went nonstop. It's just going so fast. But what, what God told me is that, you know, when, 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 when you make decisions at a young age, they affect you how you live down your life. Amen. We think that, you know, uh, we got so much time, but time goes so fast. And what we understand is we are, what we're doing right now, amen, what we're doing at a young age is we're laying the groundwork for what our future is going to be like. Come on, church. What The decisions we make now will affect us down the road. See, too many people think I can just live in the old kind of way and down the road, it'll, I'll just be all right. Let me tell you something. Bad decisions may not affect you right now, but they'll catch up to you. Oh, come on, church. They may not affect you right now, but just like the long arm of the law, they'll catch you. I, I remember a cartoon, I think it was Daffy Duck and Porky Pig, where the, the cop was coming at them. He said, press the gas. And he pressed the gas. He said, they'll never catch and the long arm of the law caught up to him. That's how the bad decision will catch up with you. Amen? Do I have any witnesses in this house? 
that have had bad decisions kept catch up with you? I know I have, amen. But what you're doing now will set the foundation of what your life will be down the road. When I think about think about the things that are going on in my life and, and where I am, and you know, I begin to think, you know, I shouldn't have the life that I have right now. I, I'm not really qualified to be where I am. I'm, I'm not really. Uh, I don't have enough education to be who I am. You may be saying that to yourself. I, I, I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing. So I have to think back, amen, to the decisions that I made in my life, amen. I think back when I dedicated my life to Christ, amen. That was one of the best decisions I ever made. And, and, and that basically springboarded things happening in my life, amen. I think back to those decisions, amen, that set me up for where I am right now. Because if it wasn't for God, I wouldn't even be here. Because when I was a kid, they said I had a learning disability. But God looked beyond that, amen. Oh, come on, church. When, when I decided to really get serious about the things of God, I, I see how that shaped me. And, and, you know, it was something about when, when I used to hear messages, something about it resonated with my spirit. Even though I might have been with people that may not have received it, there was something in my spirit that received that word. Amen. There was something about it that, that just uh, got into my spirit at a young age. But I never knew where God would take me. Amen. I never knew where, where, where God would lead me. But what was happening is the foundation was being laid. Oh, come on, church. That word lays a foundation in you at a young age. And when I was young, amen, it shaped me. That word molded me into the man that I am today. The decision that I made back then to go to church when all my friends weren't going to church. Oh, come on. Come on now. Y'all better hear me here. When, when all my friends were out partying and acting crazy and my decision to go to church, that's what shaped my life. And I, I got to the point when I was a young adult when I said, you know what, I, I got to a point where I said, I don't care if any of my friends go, Lord, here I am, send me. Right. Oh, come on, church. You, you have to get to that point where, you know what, if I got a lot of dead weight on me, cut the dead weight off and say, Lord, here I am. I don't know about my other friend, but here I am, Lord, send me. There was a, that point to where God changed things in my life and what led me to this point right now. I made choices and my choices made me. Do what's right. We got to do the right thing. Amen. I know there's a lot of wrong things going on in the world, but we as Christians, we got to do the right thing. Amen. Amen. It's easy to follow the crowd. It's easy if 50 people are going all way just to jump on in so nobody notices you. It's easy to follow the crowd. But doing what's right, we got to realize there are benefits to doing what's right. God said this to Cain, amen, in Genesis chapter 4, verse 6. He's, the Lord said to Cain, the, then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? Listen to this. If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? There are benefits to doing what's right. Amen. But listen to this. But if you do not do what's right, guess what? Sin is crouching at your door. Yeah. Sin, is cr sin is waiting for you to make that turn down the broad path. Mm -hmm. Sin is waiting for you. But if you do what's right, you will be accepted. And, and this was as it, it desires to have you, but you must rule over it. That's what God said. God, God began to speak about choices. There were choices. Cain had a choice right here. He could choose to follow the way of God or he could choose to follow sin. Do what's right. Make the right choices and the right choices will make you. The most important part, I believe, of the service is not necessarily the worship. It's not necessarily the preaching. It's how you respond to God when he touches your heart. See, you can sit up in a service and be a zombie. Right. Oh, come on, church. You can sit up and be a zombie, but God doesn't call you to come to church to be a zombie. Right. He calls you to come to church to receive a word. Right. Has anybody ever been in a church service where the word, it seemed like the pastor was just talking right to you? Right. It was almost like he sat down right next to you and said, hey, let, let me tell you a little something. Right. That's how the word, that's how you're supposed to be in church. Right. You supposed, when that word gets you, it's supposed to get right down to your heart. It almost gets you want to get up out of your seat. 
That's that's the most important thing. Because honestly, five months from now, you may not remember a word I said in the message. But what God remembers is how you responded to him touching your heart. That's what it's about. It's about how you respond to the word. How do, it, it, do you just sit there and allow the word just to go over your head when God is tugging on you to get some things right in your life? Or do you respond by saying, Lord, here am I. I, I need a change. Do you just ignore the tugging of your heart? Do you just brush it off? God will remember the things that you lay at the altar. When you say, I, I, I'm going to lay this down, Lord, and I'm not going to pick it up. He'll remember the services where you were so moved that tears came down your face. He will remember the services where you were so shaken that you could barely make it to the altar. And you know, there's a moment when you're in a service where the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and it feels like He's shining a light on you, right on your heart. And God is saying, how will you respond? Will you just ignore the tugging of your heart? Will you just say, this is just another service? This is just another message? Or will you say, Lord, there's something that i got to get right. There's something you're speaking to my heart that i got to get right. I, I may be leaning toward the, the, the broad path, but your light is bringing me back to the narrow. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Job at a young age made some incredibly wise choices. He said, I'm going to stay away from evil. I'm going to serve the Lord wholeheartedly. I have the power of a made-up mind. And I plan to do this while everything is going good. I'm a multi-millionaire. I'm blessed. I'm making some decisions when I'm on top of the world. Because let me tell you something. You, you got to be able to make the right decision when everything is going well. Amen. Right. You got to be able to make decisions, the right decision when everything is, you know, a bed of roses. Because so quickly things can change. Yeah. Joe made that decision. And while I'm on top of the world, I'm still going to make. Because what, what we see now is people that have money making bad decisions. Mm. Oh, we were just talking about this. There's so many athletes that have so much money on top of the world and make it horrific decisions. So Joe made a decision. And he said that even though I'm on the top of the world, I'm still going to do the right thing. He was still making sacrifices and praying over his family. He didn't neglect the things of God because he had a lot of money in his pocket. Oh, come on, church. He said, I, I, I'm going to be strong while everything is going good. I'm going to make the right decisions when I'm on top of the world. Because as we see in verse 6 and verse 13, there came a day. Oh, let me tell you, church, there's going to come a day. Oh, somebody better hear me. They turn to your neighbor and say, there's going to come a day. There's going to come a day. And, 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 and there always comes a day. When the decisions that we make and the responses that we have to God will be tested. We're going to be tested, saints. The enemy wants to see if that praise that you prayed on Sunday is going to last till Monday. Right. Oh, come on, church. If that praise that you prayed on Sunday is going to last till Wednesday. If you're still praising God when your boss is on your back on Thursday. Oh, come on, church. Do I have any saints in this house? Amen. He's going to test and see if that word that you're speaking, do you really believe it? When you make those decisions in a church service... When the Spirit of God is moving and you say, God, I love you. God, I promise to follow you no matter what. God, I'm going to serve you only with my whole heart. There will come a day, saints, when Satan will say, let's test that. Right. Oh, come on, church. There came a day and there always is going to come a day. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, and I want to say to the young people, amen, make the decision today while your mind is sharp. Yeah, glory to God. When you don't have the weight of the world on your shoulder. That's right. when, when the biggest decision you got to make is what picture should I put on my Facebook? <laughs> oh, come on, church. When the biggest decision is what, what am I going to tweet out today on Twitter? When, when the biggest decision is what picture am I going to post on Snapchat? When, oh, come on now, church. When you ain't got no kind of heaviness, you ain't got no weight on you right now. So now is the time to make that decision. Amen. To go all the way for Christ. Because there is coming a day when you're going to have to deal with some real life stuff. Yeah. Do I have any witnesses in this church today? Do I have any grown up folks in this church? Yeah. You're going to have to deal with some real life stuff. 
You will have to deal with making some choices. So the choices that you make now will determine when, when that day comes, what the outcome will be. There's a story of a marine sniper named Carlos Hathcock. He was a, an amazing marksman, and they say he would hit targets from phenomenal distances away. He was, he was such a great marksman that they commissioned him in the Vietnam War. And, and what his job was, there was a Vietnamese assassin who was taking out a high-ranking officials in the U.S. Uh, Army. And so what they said was, we're going to hire you to take out this assassin. So they hired one assassin to take out another. And what happened was they put him in the field where this assassin was. And what they say is that if you're an assassin, you know if somebody's in your territory. And what happened is there you have these two assassins kind of playing a cat and mouse game. So they're trying to figure out where the other one is so they can take the other one out. And what happened was Carlos was in his spot and it just so happened as he glanced out in the field that he saw a glimmer of light. And what he did was he whips around his rifle and shoots. And what happened was when they pulled out the Viet Cong um, uh, sniper guy, they, they saw that the bullet that Carlos shot went through the, the um, eye, the, the, yeah, the, the skull of the assassin's gun. So that means that the assassin had his eye on him. I, I want y'all to get that now. So that means that the only thing that saved Carlos' life was that he pulled his trigger faster. I want y'all to get that. Say, the only thing that saved Carlos' life was that he pulled the trigger faster, which means that the other person was looking at him. Sometimes when you find out that the enemy has you in his crosshairs, you as a Christian must put him in your crosshairs. And the only way you're going to preserve your life is if you pull the trigger first. Oh, come on, church. That's why services like this are so important. That's why you have to decide now what you do when temptation strikes. Oh, come on, church. Now what you do when, when everything is saying, do what the flesh is telling you to do. When the flesh is saying, go for it. When the body is crying out, do what I'm telling you to do. When, when the flesh is saying, fulfill your desires. When it's crying out to, for you to make the wrong decision. Here you, what is what will determine what you'll do. When you make the decisions now, when that temptation comes, you'll be ready for it. See, oh, come on, church. See, when Joseph was being approached by Potiphar's wife, he had already made the decision that he would not defile God. It wasn't a split-second decision. Oh, come on, church. Because we know if that was, he would have made the wrong choice. Oh, come on, church. That's why we can't make a split-second decision. We need to decide when we're in the service that, you know what? If the temptation comes, I will follow Christ. Amen. Joseph didn't decide right at that moment. He made the decision, I will serve God wholeheartedly so that when the temptation comes, he was able to resist it. We are making decisions now so that our future will be blessed. And then we see, and then I saw in the story that they brought Carlos back. After Carlos had uh, retired as a uh, <coughs> Marine a sniper, there was a mission that they called him back for. And, and, and what they told him was, they said that, you know, this is, for anybody else, this would be a suicide mission. And what they said was they needed him to take out one of the generals in the North Vietnamese uh, Army. And what they said was basically... This is a, almost like a no-win situation. We got, there's a, a small window of time that you can get this guy. And the area that we have to bring you to, you're actually going to have to crawl on your belly for probably about a couple miles to get to a little tiny little ravine, a little tiny area where you can set yourself up so you can kill this general. And what they said was is that the only time you can get him is he, he's in like a fortified barrack. And the only way you can get him is if he comes out every day at the same time to stretch. So they said your window of opportunity is small. Everything else, there's so many things against you. And he accepted that job. 
So what they did was they, they brought him down and they brought him to this little ravine and he had to crawl on his belly, I believe they said, for three days. He had to crawl day and night on his belly to get to this spot with a little bit of food, a little bit of water. They said that he, he was basically drinking little cups out of his canteen from the cat to keep himself hydrated. He had to live off the land, so he had to eat things that were around him. So he's pretty much starving. He pretty much had, in his mind, he said his mind was playing tricks on him. His mind was telling him, you know what, there is no way out of this situation. You know, you, you, what did you sign up for? I can't believe I signed up for this. Just like some Christians may be saying when they go through something. But then he waited, and after he got to that point, uh, he waited for that three days, and then after three days, the guy came out, and he ended up killing him. And what took him four days to get in only took him four hours to get out. And this is what they said. And I love this. And he said, and when they asked him what got him through it, this is what I love. And this is what he said. When he felt like he couldn't go any further, his mind told him, when his mind told him to give up, it says, he, he said, I said to myself, I made up my mind when I took this assignment. And when I planned it, that I would do it. And I'm not going to change it now. Even if I don't feel good, even if I'm tired, if I'm spent, if my mind is breaking down on me, amen. Before I feel like quitting, I realize I have made up my mind that before I ever got into this, that I would complete this mission. So he had made up in his mind that no matter what he went through, that it may seem like a no-win situation, that I signed up for this mission and I'm going to complete it. That's how we got to be. We got to have our minds made up. No matter what the situation looks like, I'm going to complete my mission. I may have to go on my belly for a couple of days, but God is with me all the way. I, oh, come on, church. That's the power of a made-up mind. He made up in his mind that this was a no-win situation, but you know what? I'm going to get through this because this is what I signed up for. And, 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 and I love this. You know, uh, the enemy would probably say to Job, you know, he probably ministered to Job. He probably said, where's your cattle now, Job? He probably said, where are your possessions now, Job? Just like he's telling the believers now, when you go through something, where is your job now? <laughs> if you lost your job or you lost your car, where is your car now? Where are your friends now? You know, you may have lost your friends. Where is all your silver, Job? <laughs> where are all your children, Job? And, and the word of God said, he is the accuser of the brethren. Mm -hmm. He accuses you to get you off track. Mm -hmm. Now what you going to do? <laughs> I can hear the enemy saying that. Now what you going to do, Job? You're sick. And, and you know what? We hear about Job's wife. And everyone makes her out to be a villain. But, but you know what? She was hurting too. Mm. She just lost 10 children. Right. How many mothers or wives, how many mothers after they lose children would, would be thinking sanely? Oh, come right. on, church. We, we got to look at this thing realistically. We, you know, we make her out to be the villain, but she was just a human. And, and, and she basically said after she lost her children, she said, you know what? Just curse God and die. Mm -hmm. You know what? I done lost all my kids. You know, lost all the money. This seems like the obvious thing to do. This seems like the most uh, uh, most human thing to do. And she was a human. And, and we, we lose that aspect of it. Just curse God and die. I don't think she was a bad person. I just think she was human. Mm -hmm. Everything's going. The kids going. The, the health is going. God has forsaken us. You know what? Curse God and die. But Job said, wait a minute. I made a decision way back there. And, and we talk about those decisions. Amen. Job made a decision when he was on top of the mountain. Amen. That no matter where he ended up, if he was at the bottom, he was still going to give God praise. I, I made a decision in my mind. Amen. And, and, now, and now my body's messed up. Amen. My, my circumstances are messed up. And, and my circumstances are saying, you know what? Throw in the towel. My circumstances are saying, you know what? You need to quit. My circumstances are saying, uh, uh, curse God and die. But Job says, I can't do it. <laughs> I plan for this trial. Oh, come on. We got to start planning for trials. Amen. We got to start preparing ourselves. Amen. So that when we go in, when we go into a fiery furnace, what we plan for will get us out. Amen. Right. When we go through the trial, we need to plan for it. Amen. Job said, I, I've already planned for this. <laughs> I, I've already planned for Job said, I can't, I can't uh, quit. Amen. Because I planned for this trial. I knew it would come. I know my Redeemer lives. Mm -hmm. 
In, in Job chapter 1 verse 20, it says that this, Job got up, tore his robe, and shaved his head. <laughs> I'm with you, Job. I'm with you with the shaved head. That's all right. <laughs> it says then he fell to the ground, and what did he do? He worshipped. He didn't start cursing and throwing a fit. He worshipped. How many people will worship if you just lost everything? That's the time. And you know what? People may say that's not the time to worship. That's the best time to worship. That's the best time to say, Lord, I love you in spite of. I may not have money in my bank account, but I know the cattle upon a thousand hills belongs to you. I know I'm a tither. Amen. Oh, come on now. The word said, bring him in remembrance of his word. You said, if I give, it's coming back to me. Amen. If I got to wait for it, I'm going to wait for it. Because I know if I wait for it, I'm going to get God's best. Amen. Oh, come on, church. I'm not going to complain. Amen. Job worshiped, it said. And he said, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. I'm going to praise the Lord anyway. How many people would do just praise the Lord anyhow? I'm just going to praise Him anyhow. I don't care what the circumstance look like. It may look like you you just failing and everything. But you know, in a moment, God can turn things around for you. Oh, come on now. In a moment, God can switch things up for you. So why would I ruin it by speaking defeat? So I'm going to keep speaking like Job. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. No matter what I'm going through, I'm still going to bless the name of the Lord. Then it says, in all this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. He also said in Job chapter 13, verse 15 and 16, Though he slay me, yet will I hope in him. Oh, how many people can get that in your spirit? Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And then he said, I will surely defend my ways to his face. And then in verse 16, the first verse says, indeed. See, when you say indeed, that means you know something. When you say surely, that means you know something. You know God's going to make a way. When you, when you can say indeed, glory to God, God is going to make a way. He said indeed, glory to God. Hallelujah. I love this. This will turn out for my deliverance. I know God's going to deliver me. When I was on top of the mountain, I prepared to go down in the valley. Oh, come on now. And my preparation, amen, for me was not to just keep me down in the valley, but was to lead me out of the valley. Yes, right, oh, come on, church. Yes. Hallelujah. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I have made up my mind that no matter what, I will trust the Lord. How many people have made up in your mind that no matter what, I will trust the Lord? No matter how many times I, I, I stumble or how many things the enemy tried to get me off track, I will trust the Lord. That if he brought me to it, he'll bring me through. Mm -hmm. If he brought me to this situation, he's going to bring me through. Either he's going to bring me through it or he's going to move that situation out of my way. Amen. That's the kind of God we serve. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Do I have any witnesses in this Amen. church today? Amen. When your mind is made up, there is nothing that can shake you. Oh, come on now. We sing that song by Hezekiah Walker, I am sold out. My heart is fixed and my mind is made up. That means no matter what you go through, can nothing shake me. Oh, my heart is fixed. My mind is made up. I, I, no matter what you bring to me, devil, I'm still going to praise the Lord. I'm still going to keep my eyes on Jesus, the author and the completer of my faith. Amen. There is no room. We say there's no room, no vacancy. I don't have vacancy for negative thinking. I don't have any vacancy for, for negative talking, amen. When I hear people talking negative to me, I, I got to nix them off. I got to give them the highs and stiff arm. You, you can't come at me with that negative because my mind is fixed on the word of God. And I'm prepared for this trial. <laughs> Nothing can shake you. There's no room or vacancy for anything that will get me off of the narrow path. And I'm going to close with this. When your mind is truly made up, you can talk like this. And then Job said in Job chapter 23 verse 10. But he knows the way that I take. Thank God he knows the way you take. God knows everything about you. Amen. He knows you're sitting down and you're standing up. And I love this what he said. When he has tested me. Some of us got to go through some tests. Some of us may be in a test right now. Some of us may think how in the world am I going to get through this. But thank God. This is what Job said. I will come forth as pure gold. Give, stand up and give God some praise. Stand up and give God a shout. Of